Good morning, folks. We've got a number of cool updates today from the space science world. We've got earthquakes and a touch of weather as well as we begin at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on the sun, seeing the solar polar coronal holes north and south, much smaller dark patches at low latitude. Meanwhile, the decaying umbral magnetic field region shining brightly on the north has ceased X-ray production. And the solar wind speed is dropping out, but the ambient quiet stream is slightly more dense than usual. That's the orange line on a rise, which is how you drop the solar wind speed but still manage to nudge the geomagnetic activity a few inches forward. Nothing major. So just a reminder, the Solar Dynamics Observatory is looking from Earth's point of view. Earth is orbiting from left to right in the frame just as the sun spins that way. But we also have Stereo A behind in Earth's orbit off to the left, and this is what it sees. Just a little FYI, as it's also spotting a southern active region on the far side. And so again, the bright umbral magnetic fields in orange we see crossing the north on SDO are the bright fields seen top right on Stereo A. This is our side view of the sun. Top two earthquakes on the planet yesterday here, one struck in the water south of Baja, and then another rumble in Nevada. One does hope it's merely aftershocks from the bigger one earlier this year, but I'm not sure how anyone could ignore this part of the crust right now. Sticking with natural disasters, but going to the sky. NOAA officially predicts an above-average Atlantic hurricane season. Link below to their explanation and storm name list for the year. Interesting story up next about the cosmic ray simulator NASA has now, meant to study the cosmic ray effects on astronauts. Forgive me for not volunteering. But the cooler cosmic ray biology today comes from Stanford and shows how the earliest life forms on the planet, before DNA, could have had their handedness given to them by space energy. With the magnetic polarization potential of the bombardment, they have worked out exactly how the cosmos may have even shaped the first DNA into a helix simply through these magnetodynamic actions induced by electric particles. Now we're going out into space, and we're starting with the collisions of the galaxy in the past. While the most well-known ancient galactic collision of the Milky Way is with the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, but the preceding Gaia Enceladus merger likely set our spin and mass distribution to create the spiral galaxy we live in today. Well, they think they see the perturbations in the galaxy, and for one star in particular. They say its motion suggests it was flung substantially when the merger occurred, and still maintains that velocity and vector today. Up next, fast radio bursts. One of the biggest mysteries in the cosmos just got a major boost a few days ago when, for the first time, they spotted an electromagnetic counterpart to the radio burst, and it's not just coming from the general direction of a distant galaxy. It came in the form of X-rays from a known magnetar. In two separate preprints that hit archive last night, and which I'm sure will be major space news in the coming days, the official story of fast radio bursts is going to be their production in magnetar bursts. These are the bursts we investigated recently as being possible on any sphere magnet with low enough L-shells that can arc down and discharge, which, by the way, includes the Earth, potentially. Quick note here while we're on that topic, one of the instigators of such troubles in our solar system is the rippling energetic crossings of the galactic field sheet. Now while this is grainy and not exactly HD quality, it does represent the first imaging via dust of that corrugation to the disk seen from the outside. Last but not least, this nebula here is one of the most spectacular radio targets. In case you can't tell, that's a double lobe burst, dipole north and south even if one is stronger and bigger, and once again, ALMA's proving why it's one of the top five observatories in the world for space science. These are the magnetic fields of that system. I just had to sit there for a second last night and let these images sink in. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Thank you very much for watching. I am seeing a lot of disaster-related questions in the comment section that already have answers in the Cosmic Disaster playlist I pretty much tell you to watch every single day. Maybe it's time for that review. It is right below the video in the description box where it also is every day. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.